I was scrolling on TikTok the other day and <laughs> I came across a video and I thought to myself, wow, this is a really good Sherry Lewis cosplay. And uh, <laughs> that's what the first thing that went through my mind. And then I thought, oh my gosh, this isn't a cosplayer. This is her daughter. And I didn't even know anything about you. And so uh, I started like being obsessed watching your videos. And thank you. How long did you start performing with Lamb Chop? When did this all start? Okay. First of all, no one has ever described it as cosplay before, <laughs> to my knowledge. So I love that. Um, my favorite comments are when people say, I'm. 40 years old. I watched you when I was growing up. Damn, you look good. <laughs> that was my like, second thought, actually. I was like, wow, like, she looks great for wow, her. Wow, she's well preserved. Right. Um, Mom passed 25 years ago, and I started performing with Lamb Chop within months. So you picked it up right after almost. Oh, yeah. I've been touring performing art centers around the country for almost a quarter of a century, which wow. is amazing. And uh, working with the USO, um, and I only really discovered TikTok like in a, in a significant fashion, maybe three months ago. Um, I was a lurker before that, <laughs> and um, and I don't know why. I mean, I feel particularly stupid that I didn't realize that it's the perfect medium for me. Oh, absolutely! Uh, in the last three months, we've gone from I don't know. 40,000 to well over 200,000. And Instagram was the amazing one. I went from 1,600 followers to almost 150,000 followers in like three weeks. Wow. So it's lovely. I get the sweetest comments from people that, you know, either they had a tough childhood and mom made them happy or they're having a bad day and I made them happy. Um, it is a truly an honor and a privilege and a pleasure to be doing this. Before your mom passed away, was the show still going on? Was it actively on air or yes. had it already oh, been? Oh yeah, mom was on TV from 57 till 99. Right after Lamb Chop's play along, we went directly into Charlie Horse Music Pizza and she was diagnosed with terminal cancer in the middle of us shooting. Mm. So, And so did you take over after that or did the show have to end? Because the show had to end. Okay. I I didn't I didn't know I I didn't know I was a ventriloquist. <laughs> I was my mom's head writer. I was her producer. Um, uh, it didn't you know as a producer, all you want is an incredibly talented star, right? Because then everything you do is your work looks great because right. the talent is there. So it didn't occur to me that that's what I wanted to do. In fact, I I didn't even really like puppets. I mean, I liked puppets, but I didn't want to play with them. Right. And then I got letters saying, you know, is, is lamb chop dead too? Mm. And I couldn't obviously couldn't let that be a yes. She's my little sister. Yeah. So wait a minute. You didn't know you were a ventriloquist. So when did that start? How did you just stumble I mean, onto that? It, you know what? It, 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 okay. What, what is your dad good at? Uh, playing a musical instrument. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing somebody, you're, you're basically playing a musical instrument right now. You right. know, even if, it, so did it ever occur to you that there was something your dad could do that you couldn't do? No, we all look at our parents and we're like, well, if they can do it, how hard can it be? Right. So what, what's the, the TikTok trend? How hard can it be? Boys do it. Right. Um, so it didn't occur to me. And I really feel that most of what, stops us from being able to do something is the fear of not being able to do that something or the thought that it's difficult. Like, but it didn't occur to me that I, I wouldn't be able to do it. And therefore I was able to do it. That's incredible. That's why it's so important that we continue to have the performing arts in schools. Right. And we continue to have the funding for scientists to come in and we continue to have girls in STEM programs because if you don't think, if you haven't seen it, why would you think you could do it? Right. I'm probably going to screw this up, but uh, it was some story I read that somebody didn't know they could run a 20 minute mile, you know, 50 right. years ago or whatever. And now it's a common thing, you know, or whatever. Nobody thought yeah. it could be done because nobody saw anybody do it. And now that exactly. they saw somebody do it, everyone can do it now. So I remember when I was watching Star Trek. I love Star when Trek. I, oh, me too. Uh, okay. R remind me about that. Okay. I was watching Star Trek when I was a little kid. And then the men landed on the moon. 
And I remember thinking, why are they in those funny outfits? What's the big deal about man landing on the moon? Because with my exposure to Star Trek, I just assumed that was real. I was very young. Right. So my parents wrote a Star Trek. They wrote one of the original episodes. It's called Lights of Zetar. Okay. Uh, are arguably the most boring of all <laughs> of the Star Trek original episodes, but season three. And it was about a planet called Memory Alpha, where all of the world's knowledge was, or all of the universe's knowledge was stored digitally. So basically, my mom invented the internet. Yeah, cloud computing. Yes. (laughs) I didn't know your parents wrote that. Little known facts about Sherry Lewis. We've got a lot of little known facts about Sherry Lewis, both in our new book, Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chop, the team that changed children's television available on Amazon or my TikTok shop if you want it um, autographed or or my Etsy store if you want it autographed. Um, and we have a documentary that will be coming out, I hope, sometime in the next year, currently touring film festivals called Sherry and Lamb Chop. Oh, I love that. Well, I'm definitely buying a book. I got to put it somewhere here in the studio. I'll put it next to the Star Trek picture we have back here. Uh, Excellent. I love that. Let me ask you this. Who wrote, this is a song that never ends. Was that your mom? Did she write that? That was a gentleman named Norman Martin. Okay. And and it was, mom said, write me an earwig. And he did. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I I still sing it. (laughs) That's incredible. Hello, Michael. Hi, Lamb Chop. How are you? Oh, I'm awesome. It is finally stopped raining. It was raining so hard. It was horrible, but it's a beautiful day, and I'm going to go outside and play later. Well, that's great. It was great to meet you virtually. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that brings to my next question that's an original lamb chop right it is that is an og do you have to make new lamb chops because i imagine somewhere over time the material kind of there, falls apart the gentleman who made lamb chop for most of her life um unfortunately passed during covid so um i'm just taking really good care of the ones i have i'm so glad you have them because yes. it's surprising to me that how many people Uh, whose parents did this or that, they don't keep anything from their work. Well, you know, I don't I I don't keep a lot of stuff because I don't have a shrine room. Sure. You know, but um, like I don't display all of mom's 13 Emmys because I have one of my own. And it's it is ingenuous to display someone else's. But Lamb Chop is not a thing. She's a person. Right. So. Uh, of course, she and Charlie Horse and Hush Puppy are all with me. You know, I was thinking if my dad was Fred Rogers, I would at least have one or two of the sweaters, you know, yes. to pass down within the family, This, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm so glad that you've kept your siblings, really. Yes. Now, how did your mom come up with Lamb Chop? I don't know that story. Well, she had two puppets, Taffy Twinkle and Samson something. Um, They were big Jerry Mahoney dummies. And the Captain Kangaroo show called and said, we love you, but we hate your dummies. Do you (laughs) have anything else? And mom had been working with a felt artist in New York City by the name of Ethel, Ethel Rogers, maybe, um, and um, had designed Lamb Chop, but hadn't done anything with her. And so Lamb Chop debuted on the Captain Kangaroo show. And then the rest was history. Yes. Now, I know you're taking over for Lamb Chop, and you're trying to preserve your mom's legacy, the character, the original character. But I do know people that take over legacy characters. And over time, they kind of put their own spin on the personality, right? I do have my own spin on it because it is Lamb Chop. It's all about the relationship with a character. Right. And um, Lamb Chop was mom's daughter. Mom, Mom was mom to Lamb Chop, essentially. Right. I'm not her mother. I am her sister. With all the inherent um, sibling rivalry that exists. Now, I I was Lamb Chop's little sister because Lamb Chop was born before me. But unfortunately, I aged and Lamb Chop didn't. So now <laughs> I am her big sister. And we have a very loving relationship. But she teases me um, in a way that she did not tease mom. See, I like that. A fresh take. Yes. But you know what I mean? But but honoring the legacy. Yes. Yes. She has remained 
the same six-year-old, but a six-year-old today is dealing with different issues than a six-year-old did in 1956. Yeah. Uh, although we have a section in the documentary where Lamb Chop is saying uh, that, you know, she wants to run for president and Charlie Horse says, you can't run for president. You're a girl. Uh, 35 presidents, which tells you how long ago it was, right. um, and not one of them a girl. And Lamb Chop says, 35 presidents, uh, all men, and not one of them could do the job right, which I agree <laughs> with. That is, still, that is still the case. If someone came up to you and said, hey, we want to do a new Lamb Chop for Netflix or PBS or whatever, yes. would you do it? Okay. Yes. Yeah, no question. What advice did your mother give you that has really helped you in whether life or career? You know, so many things from uh, the day begins the night before, which means if you have an eight o'clock Zoom with a radio show, try not to stay up too late. Right. Um, to it is amazing how lucky hardworking people are um, to which is sort of obvious how you don't get what you don't ask for. Another momism, mm -hmm. and on it. Put put your sweater on. I'm cold, as every mother says. Get your feet off the coffee table. That one I don't listen to. It's my house, my coffee table. <laughs> my um, but mom, mom was a a. She was an extremely smart and extremely practical, um, and focused person. She was not just a little lady who played with puppets. She was a businesswoman in the 50s where she had her own production company in an era where she couldn't get her own credit card without her father co-signing because he was male. Mm. She was a very strong feminist and a very liberal Democrat. Look what she did. She changed the world and yes. impacted so many people's lives. Yes, which is just it's so nice. It it. um you know, I, I wake up every day and I post something on TikTok. My TikTok handle is at your fave Lamb Chop, F-A-V. Um, and Instagram is Mallory Lewis and Lamb Chop. And then I wash my face, brush my teeth, and I go look at the comments. I get all the love that mom earned. And I try to be very respectful of that. And I try to put out happiness, humor, and good feeling back into the internet. And it's probably needed now more than ever, really, with everything mm -hmm. going on. It's it's uh, perfect. It was perfect timing for you to get on TikTok, yes. for you and Lamb Chop well, to get on TikTok. I think that people are scared. Um, and mom's audience are our, our metrics, as my young person has taught me to say. Uh, <laughs> Uh, are, although I've gotten very good at editing on CapCut myself. Oh, well, that's but, great. That's great. That's a great uh, talent yeah, to have. Yeah. You know, there's some in the 18 to 25 range, but it's mostly uh, 25 to 55. And and that's a, it's a tough age to be. And, you know, you're worried about your kids. You're worried about your parents. You're worried about the two old men that are currently fighting to see which one's going to take over the country. You're worried about everything. Yeah. And I try to give people three minutes that is just not political and not, you know, depressing and just, and not about how to put your makeup on um, or which jeans you must have. Right. Although I have, been, I have been influenced to buy a couple of things on TikTok shop. <laughs> I will admit. Me too. The Kosas, the Kosas revealer concealer is actually very, very good. Um, the uh, the lip changing oil. This is probably not stuff you get in your feed, Michael. But um, um, but I will now, I guess. <laughs> but you will now. That's right. Um, but yeah, it's. I just try to put out a little bit of positivity every morning and just some fun. Yeah, and and I think that's what's needed. And and people uh, underestimate the importance of that. I think. Um, but yeah. it's, it's very important. Now, but sometimes you just want to sit on the toilet and not be stressed. Right. When you know that's exactly. Just, that's exactly right. Now, growing up, uh, you know, your mom, Sherry Lewis, did you ever use her name or Lamb Chops to get into to a uh, place or to get something? Well, did you ever I, throw not, that weight not around? Grow, not growing up because mom was there to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but now, I mean, yeah, definitely. I, I was down in um, uh, BVI on a sailboat. My husband and I are both captains. Oh, and, wow. And I ran into the deputy manager of Necker Island, Richard Branson's private resort. 
And, um, you know, I said, how much does it cost to stay there? He's like 150,000 a night. I said, well, I guess I'm never going to be staying there. And I mentioned Lamp Chop and he's like, I love Lamp Chop. And I said, well, she's on that sailboat right over there. And she would love a tour of Necker Island. So the next day we got to have a three hour tour. So, and I, I have landed on carriers with a tail hook. I've, I've had a blast because of Lamp Chop. So your little sister's uh, uh, paying it forward to you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Now, lastly, I know you kind of dropped some stuff about your mother, little tidbits here and there, and you've got more in your book. Uh, But what's one last thing that uh, you would like people to know about your mom? I would like people to know that she was a 3D, fully formed human being. She had highs. She had lows. She had um, moments where she had brilliant success. She had moments where there were failures. She had a wonderful marriage, but it was a real marriage that had real difficulties at times. She had a daughter who adored her and who was probably a giant pain in the you know what as a teenager. I won't even say probably, I'll just say it. Um, She was a fully formed human being with hopes and dreams and desires. And she was interesting and she was smart. and, um, And she was the little lady who played with puppets in Neither the book, Sherry and Lamb Chop, the team that changed children's television, nor the documentary, Sherry and Lamb Chop, is there any no more wire hangers moment? I mean, she she was lovely. So no one will be disillusioned or heartbroken or disappointed, but they will be informed and I hope entertained. That's incredible. I can't wait to read it. Um, listen, the Lewis talent is not lost on you. You can captain a, a ship. Uh, you can, you can, you're a ventriloquist. You just picked it up one day. I mean, it's incredible. Thank you so much for your work. So is it TikTok the best place to find you or your website? Yeah, I would say go to TikTok at your fave lamb chop or go to Instagram, Mallory Lewis and Lamb Chop. Um, And if you're going to be in Chicago on April 20th, go to the Gorton Performing Arts Center because that's where Lamb Chop and I will be. And uh, if you ever come to Dallas, we're there. I love that. Thank you, Michael. This was really such a fun way to start the day. Well, thank you, Mallory. I appreciate everything you're doing. All right. Thanks, buddy. Bye. No problem. Bye-bye.